Hello everyone, this is Ashish Sani from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to our YouTube channel where we explore exciting projects and delve into the world of electronics. Today, I have an exciting project to share with you all. Controlling an LED with a capacitive touch sensor using the powerful ESP32 microcontroller and the ESP IDA framework. So let's dive right in. To get started, we will need an ESP32 microcontroller, a capacitive touch sensor module, an LED and a 330 ohm resistor. I have already wired up the circuit on this breadboard but let me quickly walk you through the connections. The touch sensor has three pins, VCC, Output, Ground. We connect VCC to the 3.3 volt ground to ground and output to the pin number 22 or you can say the GPIO 22. So I'm using that uh, for the connections. Additionally, we will connect the anode of LED to GPIO 5 and the cathode of current limiting resistor connected to ground. Now that we have the hardware set up, let's move on to the software part. We will be using the ESP IDF framework which provides a rich set of libraries and tools for developing firmware on the ESP32. If you haven't already, make sure to set up the ESP IDF environment on your system which I have already covered in my previous video. So if you haven't watched them, just uh, check the description. I have already added the link over there so that you can set up the ESP IDF environment on your system. Now that we have our connections ready, now we can start further with the programming stuff. And for that you can see on my screen, this is a project which we have created in our last video where I showed you that how do we control the LEDs. So that is what we have done and in fact we use the built in LED over there but this time I'm gonna use an external LED, right. So let me uh, make the changes of that LED first of all or let's say let me first of all set up the mode for the GPIO pins which we are going to use in our today's session. And as we have already discussed, we are going to use the pin number 5 and 22, 5 for the LED and 22 for the output of your touch sensor, right? So let me do that. Firstly, I'm going to change this LED, which is right now connected on pin number 2. I'll change it to pin number 5. So in this way, what I've done is I've simply set up my pin number 5, which is GPIO 5 as the output pin so that I can simply send some signal from my ESP32 to my LED to control it accordingly, right? So this is what I have done, right? Like over here, you can see we already have the code where we have simply set up like how do we control your LED or let's say this was a code for your blinking of LED, but now we have to do something else and that something else is that whenever I'll touch the sensor, I have to control my LED. So let's say if I'll touch the sensor, my LED should turn on and if I will not touch the sensor or let's say if I will not press my finger on that, in that case, I want my LED to be turned off, right? So this is what I want in that case. But for doing that, first of all, I also have to set up that what pin I'm going to use so that I can read the signal from my touch sensor. Because after all, your touch sensor is your input device for you or you can say input component, whatever you want to say, you can assume that, but it's just like an input device for you, which is going to give you some signal so that we can read it and accordingly we can perform some task, right? So this is what I have to do. And for doing that, I'll simply use the same instruction, which is this one, GPIO, GPIO underscore set underscore direction, just like we have done here. Here also I'm gonna do it, GPIO underscore num underscore 22, because I'm going to use pin number 22 to read the data put a comma and over here like here I have simply set up that I want to use it as the output pin but this time I'm gonna use or let's say I'm going to set up my pin as an input pin so I have to specify it like GPIO mode input so that means I am simply specifying that I want to use my pin number 22 as my input pin so that I can read the changes changes means changes coming from your touch sensor right so this is what i have done so this is the way like how i can simply specify or let's say i can simply set up the mode of your gpio pin whether as an input or whether as an output so this is what i can do and this is what i have done now that you have set up that how do you 
I want to use the pins. Now it's time for us to read the data from the GPIO pin number 22 because pin number 22 is for reading the data or let's say is for your touch sensor. So I want to read the touch sensor values and just because it's a touch sensor and we don't know when the user will simply touch that touch sensor right so we have never know that right so that's the reason we have to start a loop or you can say we have to start an infinite loop and inside that i'll simply read my data right so for that i'm simply gonna put my condition and in this what i'll do is i'll simply set it up like gpio get level so this is going to read your data right so here i'll simply specify what pin i'm going to use i'm going to use pin number 22 and i want to read the data from there right so just open up the brackets and this is the condition so basically if i will touch it or let's say if the touch sensor is going to be touched in that case we will get a change and that change will be high change right so this will give me a high signal that means this condition will be true and in that case what i want to do is i just want to turn my led on right and you can see this is an instruction for that to turn the led on so i'll put it inside right so you can see i have simply turned on the led when the touch sensor will be touched and uh, this is the scenario when the touch sensor will be touched now if the touch sensor is not touched or you can say if i will not get the high value in that case what should i do i simply have to turn off the led right so this is the instruction for turning it off but one more thing you can see in here here i am using pin number two but in our current scenario we are using pin number five so i have to change it to pin number five as well right so this is turning it on turning it off and along with this i also want to put up a delay and that delay will be of 100 milliseconds and that's the reason i am putting the value as 10 so that it will uh, like give a delay of 100 milliseconds so this is the way how we have done it we have simply initialized the pins like how do we want to use it and after that we have started a loop and also we are reading up the data and accordingly we are controlling the led so this is the complete code that we have done today right and as we have already seen in the last video the next step is we have to build the program and we have to accordingly flash it or you can say we have to simply upload that code to your esp32 right and to do that first of all you need to connect your esp32 to your system or you can say your circuit which you have on your breadboard you have to connect it to your system so that you can read it and you can verify it right so let me do that and let me see like how does it work So I have connected it. Okay. Now open up the terminal. I'm opening a new terminal. Now over here you can see this is loaded automatically, right? I didn't do anything, and just because here in my last video I've already shown you. So this is what I have already done, right? And just because of that, whenever I'll open the terminal this is going to load automatically right so this is what i have done now just simply run this command this is the command idf.py build just press enter uh, okay guys so you can see like i'm getting an error right so i'm getting this error just because currently i'm not inside the correct directory right so you can see currently i'm inside this blinking underscore led which is this one but my project is inside this which is led underscore blink so i have to move inside right uh, i'm inside now now i'll run it again now you can see this time it's working right so it's done successfully now let me flash it and for flashing you know like uh, what's the uh, command that i have to run and uh, in fact if you don't want to specify what's the port or something right so just because currently i have only connected my esp32 my system so i can simply put it this way so that it will automatically detect 
that what port I am going to use or let's say on what port my ESP32 is connected to my system so I can do it directly also right so I'll only put this idf.py uh, and flash and I can simply press enter but if in case you know the port number and you want to specify that then you can simply do it this way hyphen p and port number just like I have already shown in my last video right so you can do that so let me uh, do it this way now So you can see the code is uploaded successfully and now everything is done. Now it's time for us to check it and let's see how does it work. All right. So now let me test it out. So you can see here is the circuit on your screen and here is the touch sensor and here is the LED. So I'm touching my finger over here. You can see LED is turned on. I'm removing it and the LED is turned off. I'm touching the touch sensor. LED is on, LED off. LED on, LED off. So you can see that this is the way like how we can use a touch sensor and we can accordingly control our LED or whatever you want to control or whatever functionality you want to achieve with respect to your touch sensor. I hope this session was valuable for you and you have gained a lot of uh, things from here. But still, if you're facing any difficulties in any of the topic or in anything, whatever I've covered today, then feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section. And also, if you're new to our channel and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do click on the subscribe button so that you do not miss any videos from our channel. Also, you can share this video with everyone so that they can also get the benefits from this. So that's all from my side. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and take care.